Lord, that as we're gathered together us unto you this morning, we're gathered together to fulfill your desires, to satisfy your heart, to meet your needs, to exalt your precious name. And Father, we ask you that you will move in this hour by your anointing and by your spirit. Lord, you will quicken our hearts. You will meet each and every heart this morning. Lord, you'll satisfy the hunger, the desire that's within each and every one. Lord, you'll enlarge our capacity for thee. Lord, and cause us to move uh, in the Holy Spirit as never before, to move in unity, a unison, a oneness, oh God. Uh, Lord, have your way, we pray. Uh, cause your word uh, uh, to, uh, to emerge, uh, to come forth uh, out of the midst of the, of the body this morning. Uh, Lord, even that word of the Lord uh, that's so precious, uh, that's so vital, that's so needful this morning, uh, that will liberate us, uh, that will mold us, uh, that will make uh, us, oh God, that is creative. Father, have your way and breathe upon us this morning. Release the anointing put it within each and every heart and exalt your name in Jesus' name. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Have your way, Lord. For we are needy people, Lord. We need you, Lord God. We need a fresh encounter with you, Lord God. Reveal yourself in our midst, oh God. Have your way. We thank you, Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, given thee instruments, saith the Lord, that thou shouldest do battle in this place. Uh, yea, I say unto thee that surely I have called thee, yea, forth as the school of the Spirit. Uh, yea, and as thou would pick up thine armament, saith the Lord, uh, Yea, and come before my presence, uh, yea, with thine instruments in thine hand. Uh, yea, surely thou shalt see the battle and the victory ahead, saith the Lord. Uh, yet, for there is yet a place that I desire to elevate this place, saith the Lord. Uh, yea, and my spirit shall move amongst thee, and I shall continually move. Uh, yea, until I do bring this place forth uh, into my worship. Uh, yea, into the place that I've called it forth, saith the Lord. Uh, yea, have I not said unto thee that I've placed thee in a high place? Uh, yea, and if thou would be obedient to me in this hour, yea, and if thou would not draw back, uh, saith the Lord, uh, and if thou wouldest take uh, that which I have placed within thine arm, uh, yea, and within thy mouth, uh, yea, and within thine ears, saith the Lord, uh, surely thou Thou shalt spring forth in revival, saith thy God, uh, for surely the visitation of the Lord, uh, yea, is at thy doorsteps, uh, yea, and he doth desire to break forth among thee, saith the Lord, uh, yea, will thou uh, be thou open, uh, yea, to the moving of my spirit, uh, yea, for the Lord does desire to move amongst thee, saith the Lord. Uh, Seated. Glory to God. Most of you were already, but Amen. The Lord is speaking many words, many things to us this morning, and confirmation and encouragement to stir us up. And uh, warfare, it is a time of warfare. Uh, one of the things that God is restoring and 
bringing about in the church today is um, a spiritual warfare, a conflict that we can enter in. And uh, <clears throat> I was thinking that when the Lord was uh, reaffirming his covenant with Abraham in the 15th chapter of the book of, Ex of uh, <coughs> Genesis, that uh, Abraham uh, began to have a dream and God began to confirm his covenant and the presence of God was made manifest. And the Lord said to Abraham that uh, his seed, that nation that would be come forth from Abraham's <coughs> loins, uh, would be uh, in bondage and captivity for a period of 400 years. The Lord said that uh, the nation would come out with great substance and so forth, but that they would be in this place until the time that the iniquity of the Amorites would be brought to a fall. Again, God was keeping that nation in reserve for 400 years in the purpose and the plan, the purpose of God until the time of the iniquity of the Amorites would come to the full and they would be brought forth out of Egypt. Now, I was thinking of this, that when uh, Israel marched out of Egypt, and they didn't march, actually, <laughs> It was just a big throng of people, a multitude, a throng. Uh, the Bible says there was a mixed multitude in the midst. Uh, undisciplined. Someone brought out this about, I guess it was last year. They were fat and uh, sloppy. And that's the condition of Israel. And God took them through a wilderness experience where God put a fast on them. Amen. Whether they wanted it or not, God put a fast on them. God began to trim them. And God began to slim them. God began to shape them up physically. And shape them up spiritually. So we have recorded that they marched into the land. And they began to wage a warfare against the enemy. They were, I believe, they were equipped. They were disciplined. They were... Uh, in every way, physically and spiritually, mentally, they were prepared for the battle. As they went into the land, they began to wage warfare and they began to conquer the city. And the Lord quickened this thought to my heart this morning as I was meditating and listening to the word. That before we can do battle with the devil, and there are a lot of young people here this morning who are freshly saved, who are from all kinds of backgrounds, God first has to prepare us and work in us even the very <clears throat> principles of the cross. You can't fight the devil. You can't warfare if you're struggling with your flesh. Amen. If you're having problems with your flesh. Amen. And I believe that we are entering into warfare. And God is going to give us opportunity to be collected and come together and, and move. And so this morning I get the thought, uh, be patient. Uh, uh, let, let the Lord have his way in your life daily now. Begin to press in and begin to make yourself available. The writer, Paul, writing in the book of Romans chapter 6, he says, present your members as weapons. The word members there can be translated instruments of war as, as instruments of warfare there to, to en engage in battle. But he's dealing in that particular chapter with a principle. You first have to apply the cross. There has to be an application of the cross in our lives. There has to be a, a working of the principles of the cross in our lives. A putting off and a putting on. Amen. Uh, you, can't, you can't engage in warfare uh, half equipped without the armor of God. Amen. You'll whip before you even start. You know, when Jesus encountered Satan, Satan came against him. Uh, Jesus said, Satan cometh and findeth nothing in me. He was whipped. Right there, he was whipped. When Satan cometh, can he find something in you? Can he put his finger on something in your life? He'll hinder you. He'll, he'll, 
He'll defeat you right where you're at. But God is going to equip us in the Spirit, equip us through the, up, through the, through the cross, amen, that we might stand up and move in. Glory to God and wage your warfare and bring him down. I believe that in this in these last days in which we're going to see the defeat of Satan. He's already been defeated at Calvary, but the appropriation of that victory and the casting down. And we sang that chorus this just a little while. It said <clears throat> Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he's writing to the Corinthians. He says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. You can't fight this battle in the flesh. You can't fight this battle in your own strength. You can't fight this battle if there's sin in your life. But it says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. Hallelujah. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ when your obedience is fulfilled. Now there's, a, there's the other part of that. There's a responsibility on our part to walk in obedience. First of all, we must wage a warfare within this very earth and this very land in which we're living. The casting down of imaginations. High things that would exalt itself <coughs> against the knowledge. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ as our obedience is being fulfilled. Amen. You know, another thought that will, Lord, quicken to my heart. Uh, this, uh, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise. Now, get this. We're thinking of going out and doing battle against the devil. But God says, hey, wait a minute. Arm yourselves likewise. Amen. Christ suffered in the flesh. We first have to wage a warfare within this very earth of ours. Amen. There must be first a bringing down of these things within our very lives that have hindered us, that have kept us from moving on in God. And by the grace of God, and by His enabling, and by the power of God, through the operation of the cross, yes, the victory is ours. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as you begin to move in this area and move in this direction and, and, and applying these principles, then you're going to see the devil. He, he will fall down before you. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. You know what Jesus said? If I, by the finger of God, cast out demons. Amen. You know what? The finger of God. If I, by the finger of God, Jesus said. I mean, here we are struggling. We're beating them up. We're, we're strangling them. We're say, pounding them. And, and we're going through all kinds of contortions and all kinds of things. And Jesus said, I by the finger of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. This is something that we have not seen yet. The kingdom of God in demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost in that way. But it's going to be affected in the people who are being equipped by God and by the Spirit. In whose lives the principles of the kingdom are in operation. The cross is a central of their lives. The centrality of their lives. Glory to God. I, I believe that this revival that God is sending in these last days is not going to flail. It's not going to wane. It's not going to uh, just decay. It's not going to dissipate as previous revivals. And those who have been, we're talking uh, different ones, uh, men who have been used mightily in revival, seem like they were used for five, ten years and all of a sudden they just fizzle right out. <laughs> I believe that in this last great move of God, it's not going to fizzle out. It's going to rise as the sun rises, and it's going to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Amen. Amen. Because God's people are being prepared for it. Dear hearts, God wants to prepare you for the revival and for the thing that God is bringing in the earth today so that when there is no revival, let's say seemingly, you're standing anyway. Glory, you're going to stand. You're going to, you're going to, when you get out there, you know, it's wonderful to dance in here and to move in God and to have all these things. But when you get out there and you fall on your face, God wants to put something in you. 
Amen. The Bible says that Joseph was in, in prison until iron came into his soul. God wants to put iron in your soul. God wants to put stamina in your being. God wants you to be steadfast. How is that going to be brought about? By the operation and the working of the cross. Listen, that word is valid, the warfare. It's twofold. It's out there. It's, in, it's yet to come. We're going to see it. But let's right now, there's a warfare within our very being. Amen. Where the enemies of God are being brought down low. There is a casting down imaginations. <clears throat> High things that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and things like that. God's bringing them down. Hallelujah. And in this flesh that would rise up and retaliate and backbite and murmur and complain and rebel and say, I don't want to wash dishes. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do the other thing. And take things and help yourself and have that type of... God's going to bring that down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bring us into this place in Him of, 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 of submission to Him, to His ways, to, to the, to the uh, movings of God, and then we're going to see. Amen. I believe this is a year of visitation. We've all been... I've talked about revival since the first day I've come to Pinecrest. That was eight years ago. <laughs> eight years ago. And I'm still believing God for a revival. Amen. I believe some of the others who have been here as long have believed God for revival. And, and we've begun to experience it. But I want to tell you something, young people. Begin to prepare your hearts in this way. Begin to uh, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Begin to apply the principles of Calvary, the principles of the kingdom, and you're going to see that you're going to stand. Hallelujah. God wants you to stand. <clears throat> stand. It's easy to get, get with it when everybody's with it. But when you're by yourself, when you're there, amen, you're going to be out there. I was talking to uh, um, Bill Harrison, um, Jim Harrison's brother, and, uh, and various graduates that I've met. And they said, boy, it's so different once you get out there. <laughs> It's, it's, it's not the way we thought it was going to be. <clears throat> Amen. Billy Walker's out there. He's been there. And uh, those who have been out there, they know it's different. But God wants to prepare your heart and mind that will stand. That will stand. Hallelujah. This is the warfare. This is the preparation. Bless God. Amen. God is preparing us for, for manifestation. Don't worry about the manifestation. Be in the preparation. Be in the preparation stages. And give yourself. Hallelujah. And you'll see God do it. Amen. Glory to God. Just an exhortation. And let's just, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Hallelujah. Let's, let's sing and, 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 and dance before the Lord. If, if that's the way God leads and, and move in God. But I want you to begin to apply the principles. Uh, and begin to see the word of God. God's going to establish you. Amen. God's going to make you an instrument. He says he's making an instrument. A threshing instrument. Having teeth. That will thresh. Glory to God. God's people, when they went into the land of promise, God said, begin to wage warfare. And they began to move and they destroyed and they pulled down and began to possess the land. Amen. The word possess there in the Old Testament literally means to dispossess and then possess. You have to dispossess the present occupants before you can possess the land. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We are able to go up and take the kingdom. Amen. If he is with us, who can be against us? Amen. For greater is he that is within you. Begin to, begin to give yourself to him as never before. <clears throat> begin to allow the word of God to work in your life as never before. I tell you, you're going to stand. 
This is what you need to stand on is in the word of God. We need to be grounded and rooted in God's word. And as we are grounded and rooted in Him, no matter what comes against you and I, we'll stand. Hallelujah. We'll stand. The adversity, the shaking, whatever it is, will stand because you're rooted and grounded in Him. Amen, the Word. So my admonition and my exhortation this morning, folks, just let the Word of God dwell in you. Let the Word of God just uh, uh, have His way in our lives. Let me, let me finish reading that, that verse and I'm finished. For as much then as Christ has suffered for, you, for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. That's the key right there. He that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. God is touching sin in our lives. He wants to remove that sin in our lives. Amen. So that when Satan cometh, he findeth nothing in you. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Glory to God. It's not in the sweet by and by. Amen. But it's right now. We can begin to apply it. We can begin to appropriate it. We can begin to see the deliverance of God work in our lives. And as that deliverance is working, we're going to see deliverance working in others. We're going to see these things happening. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Notice that. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. To the lust of men, but to the will of God. Amen. God wants us to live to the will of God and to do His will, to become His will. I believe it. Amen. Dave, come and share that song we have. I'll oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm no musician and... Uh, the last thing I like to do, those people that know me, is to sing in front of people, but I do feel that the Lord's given a song that would be very appropriate for this time. Thank the Lord for his exhortation this morning. I'd just like to exhort you. Something the Lord spoke uh, through a fellow to me one time was that, you know, we're the army of God, yes. and that's, that's true. And, you know, he said to get up in the morning without spending time with the Lord, without waiting on the Lord before the services, is like going into warfare without your orders. In the, in the day. Now, you know, like when the Lord gives us the things that we hear from God in the morning in our quiet time, it's very important that time with the Lord. And some of you that are new here, the freshmen, it's important that you spend that time waiting on the Lord. Because you'd be surprised when you get into chapel. See, I, I've, I've noticed this, that when we wait on God, it may be very dry, but when we get into chapel and a prophetic word comes or, or, or whatever comes in the meeting, the witness of that word to your spirit is so much stronger if you've spent that time. Even if it's been a dry time, but you've quietened your spirit before God. So that when God speaks, we're able to respond. That's right. And some of you that know this song, you can just sing along and I hope you pick it up. It's real simple. But uh, the words of this song, I'll tell you, it's uh, <clears throat> lift your vision high. Lift your vision high. We're in a way we've never been before. Amen. You know, the way that we're walking right now is a way we've never been in before. Right. We've never walked this way before. And God, we have to be obedient to what the Lord is saying to walk in this way. You know, we can glean from past revivals, but this is a revival. It's a fresh work that God's doing in His church today. Amen. It's a fresh work what God's doing, and we've never been this way before. And, and I'll tell you, folks, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows what the Lord is getting ready to do here. But it's, it's lift your vision high. We're in a way we've never been before. Lift your vision higher and you will see the glory of the Lord. And the second verse is, without a progressive vision, we dwell carelessly. And you repeat that. Without a progressive vision, we dwell carelessly. So lift your vision higher and you'll see the glory of God. Amen. <clears throat>
vision about this heart that God was giving us and so forth. Let's sing it this morning. Have your eyes caught the vision as your heart felt the thrill. Amen. But let's sing it out. It's the, the tremendous truth in that in this song. Have your eyes caught the vision? Has your heart felt the thrill to the call of the master? Will you answer I will? For the conflict of the ages told by prophets and by sages in its fury is upon us is upon us today that's what the lord was speaking to us this warfare amen this conflict is upon us today and it's in this upon this generation to rise up and to begin to do battle for the kingdom of god as never before let's sing it and your eyes Folks, this is serious business. Amen. Things of the kingdom, the things that God is doing in this hour are serious. Praise God. Glory to God. So let's keep our hearts attuned to him and believe the Lord. Glory to God. I kind of felt, and maybe we should have, and we just trust the Lord for a time, give some teaching along the prophetic utterance. Uh, I think sometimes we lose the preciousness of prophecy in an abundance of prophecy. You know, Paul said, ye may all prophesy. Did you know the Word of God says that? Mm -hmm. Not the same ones all the time, but ye may all prophesy. God wants to develop a prophetic <coughs> utterance in our lives and in the body of Christ. For I believe that the army of the Lord, even Ezekiel's army that he saw, was a prophetic army. And was every man armed and equipped by the Spirit and attuned and moving in the Spirit of God in a unity and a harmony that we haven't even seen yet or, or, or dreamed of. God's going to bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. You're dismissed.